Hey guys, Dr. Kyle Loveless here. Uh, I want to take a moment to, uh, you know, a while back I shot a video on and how I got rid of psoriasis. And as I look back at that video, I realized I didn't, I didn't really get the exact details. I just kind of gave a big picture. So I wanted to do a video today on the exact details of, uh, pretty precise at least, as precise, precise as I can get because it was a while back, on um, exactly what I did that shifted me out of having psoriasis all over my elbow, on my scalp. And this is something I've had since, you know, I was I guess four years old, as long as I can remember. And I did probably like many of you did that, that's watching this. I did the steroid creams. Um, I did all that, that kind of stuff. I actually ended up getting acne as well. So I did the acne medications for my skin, Accutane, lots of hardcore medications. So I've been through the kind of medical route of all this. And, uh, but there was an approach I took that kind of helped a little bit and it was a natural approach but it didn't get rid of the psoriasis completely but there was a shift I made uh, that really took it to the next level. And I'm gonna share that with you guys today, okay? so. First thing, and I know everybody wants to know, what do you eat? Okay, so I'll start with diet. The first thing I did is uh, I shifted my diet um, probably about 12 years ago, uh, 15 years ago now. It was about 2008-ish. And I shifted my diet from, you know, just eating carbs, eating, eating uh, pasta, rice, breads. Um, I would eat a lot of pasta. I would eat a lot of uh, uh, conventional meats. And I was really, did a lot of working out. So I just wanted to get big, right? A, a skinnier guy growing up, so I wanted to get bigger. And so I did a lot of that stuff, but I was inflamed all the time. I remember just being tired um, and just in this fatigue mode, unless I was, if I would go out and exercise, I would get energy, but it would disappear pretty quickly. And all I wanted to do is sit around. And that's what carbohydrates, these high, not carbohydrates, I'm sorry, that's what these heavy duty carbs, the thing we think about when we say carbohydrates, like pasta and wheat and, and all these kind of uh, thick grains, do to our body is they create inflammation. They create this high, low insulin sensitivity. They create this high blood sugar increase. And our body just spends all this time just really trying to get rid of it and fight it. And so we're exhausted, right? And so I made a shift. I read a book um, called The Seven Healthy Habits. And this was a long time ago. I, I wish I still had the book or even the author. But I took that book and as I was reading it, I started to learn about good fats versus bad fats. I started to learn about how grains, which I thought were really good for me, right? Because I, I followed the food pyramid, um, that they actually weren't very good for me and that there was a lot of genetic issues in our grain system as, in general and that they actually created inflammation. I started to learn about all these things that we teach now and it blew my mind. It really, I mean, I literally started looking at this and I wasn't even thinking about psoriasis to be really honest. I just wanted my energy back. And I started to write this stuff out and I would just memorize it. And then I would start, once I started memorizing it, I would start actually putting it into, into practice. I went to the health food store. I was in Daytona Beach at the time in, in Port Orange, Daytona, Debbie's Health Food. If you're from Port Orange, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I went into Debbie's and I would go get all the organic stuff and, and all the clean eating. And it was a process. I mean, it took me probably five, six, honestly, probably till today to get really good at this. Um, but I, I just kept with that process and I would see changes in my energy, but then my gut problems would still come back or this problem would happen. And, but I just kind of stuck with it and I would start taking supplements as I read along. And unfortunately I probably bought a lot of supplements because it was, you know, it, everything helped with everything. So I didn't know what to do. And then finally what I did is I, I started to follow doctors. I started following different, different, actually believe it or not, different chiropractors and different natural doctors and started working with them on, on getting a good eating plan for me. And so here's what I did. My eating plan, uh, with enough of the backstory, my eating plan consisted of good healthy fats. And that was a big part of my diet. I ate things like uh, grass-fed beefs, right? I ate a lot of grass-fed beef, I ate a lot of organic grass-fed beef, a lot of, a lot of uh, organic free-range chickens, tons of grass-fed eggs, right? I mean, not grass-fed eggs, uh, free-range eggs. And I ate the, that kind of the stuff we teach, taught, teach meat-wise. And I was probably, probably about 50% of my diet was that meat, right? And I would eat a normal, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner kind of deal, that normal process, and then little nuts here and there throughout the day. And then I would eat, you know, vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, very clean eating vegetables. I didn't follow, you know, night, staying away from nightshades or any of that. And I would just eat that, not, what I call a non-inflammatory diet, reduces inflammation in my body, foods that are put on this plant for us to eat. I would follow that for a good period of time. And I had saw some good results. My psoriasis reduced a good amount. You know, I still had some little bit on my elbow here that would come and go. A few times a year I'd get it on my scalp, but I felt a ton better. And I followed this kind of eating plan probably for about eight years. And it's all I knew, you know? I tried about eight years and I tried intermittent fasting and intermittent fasting did great. I didn't see much change in the psoriasis yet from that, but I did just got way more energy and I, I'm a big fan of intermittent fasting. Did that for a while. And then probably about, 
I don't know, from four years ago, five years ago, my timeline's a little off. I took a food allergy test. I did an IgG. Yeah, I hear you hear me talk about it a lot, and, and there's a good reason why I talk about it a lot. But an IgG food allergy test, I found out that eggs, which I was eating daily, which I think eggs are amazing for you, but for me, they were creating this immune response, right? And so I had this, I did this IgG test. I found out that eggs were really inflammatory for my body. I found that black pepper, I put black pepper on everything. My, my go-to seasoning was sea salt, uh, Celtic sea salt, uh, uh, onion powder, garlic powder, and black pepper. I'm sorry, black pepper and paprika. That was my, that was my go-to seasoning. I loved that. And then I found out black pepper was causing inflammation in my body as well. So I took that out and I had a bunch of other stuff. I had lettuce on there, which I was really happy with because I never liked lettuce in the first place. And when people would come over and they have a salad, uh, you know, a big salad and everybody's supposed to eat their salad, I would do it to be nice. But now I didn't have to. So it was great. So, but the IgG response, I took those foods, I completely took them out of my diet, stopped eggs cold, stopped black pepper, stopped all those things. And I'll tell you guys, within two weeks, my psoriasis was gone. I didn't do it to get rid of psoriasis. I did it because I thought it'd be healthy for me. Right? I, I learned about IgG testing. I said, oh, well, I want to check that out. I did it. I took those foods out and cool stuff happened. My gut, my gut was already in a healing place. I didn't have a lot of digestive issues then. The only real symptom, major symptom I had was the psoriasis. And that went away after that point. And so for me, it was a long process of just learning. Now, I also did some supplements in that aspect, but I had been doing those all along. The one major thing that I changed was finally getting those foods out of my diet. Okay, so that was what my eating plan looked like. It was non-inflammatory, intermittent fasting, with by also taking out my food allergies. Okay, the this next step I did was I was taking supplements. So supplements that I had, had taken all along were vitamin D3. I do about 5,000 IU's, probably three to four times a week. I would had my vitamin D levels checked; they were at a good place, so I didn't want to overdo that. I took uh, cod liver oil on a regular basis. I would take that every day, about 3,000 milligrams of cod liver oil. I would take albizia. Albizia is an herb, and I did this for about three or four months, off and on. I wouldn't take it nonstop, but I would do an herb called albizia. We have a liquid version of that we use in our office, and uh, that's a good antihistamine. It helps just overall uh, calming that histamine response in the body, but it's also called the feel-good herb because it helps neurotransmitter activity. And then also turmeric. Turmeric is one of my favorite things, and for me, it was one of my favorite things just for working out. I always felt like I recovered better when I was taking turmeric. So again, I wasn't taking it to get rid of psoriasis. I was just wanting to be healthy and feel good. And so I, um, I took the uh, turmeric daily. I take half a teaspoon, a liquid version of turmeric. I take half a teaspoon of water with that. Now, get this, I had an allergy to black pepper. So for a long time, I was taking turmeric with black pepper in it because it helps you know, kind of enhance that turmeric effect, which I get. But if you have an allergy to black pepper, it's going to have an opposite effect, okay? So you, you don't want to have that in your, in your uh, turmeric. So I would do that liquid turmeric, and then I'd have a healthy fat, the cod liver oil with it, which helps the absorption because it's fat soluble, okay? So what I say? I got D3, I got my omegas, I got uh, the turmeric, the albizia, and, and the last thing that I was taking for my gut was something called biocidin, okay? And biocidin, we'll put a picture of that. Um, it's a really cool supplement that has wormwood, uh, garlic, has a lot of different just antibacterial, antiviral things in there that help clean the digestive system out because I also in this process, I didn't say this, sorry, I did a stool test and the stool test showed that I had bacterial infections and some a slight bit of yeast. And so the biocidin was kind of my process of helping uh, kind of heal that up, okay? And then after the psoriasis was gone, I've continued to work on gut health because it's not, an, it's not a quick fix. It's something that takes years to really heal. So now I take pro, the right types of spore-based probiotics uh, and things like that, digestive enzymes and, and things that help my gut in general, okay? Um, the last thing I, I want to talk about is I, I did those, that was my eating plan, that was my supplement plan. Exercise, I didn't go crazy on exercise. I did a lot of weightlifting, but I didn't do a lot of running, a lot of sprints, a lot of cardio because it, that increases cortisol and that makes it, your, your body doesn't digest food when it's stressed. So I try not to increase stress too much. So I went more with weightlifting, that kind of workouts. And then finally, I did infrared saunas on a regular basis. We have one of those at our house and I love that. And I got plenty of sleep. I always made sure I was in bed before 10 o'clock most nights. And then I would sleep. Uh, I try to get at least eight hours of sleep every night. I love taking naps. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but I always try to get a nap in the middle of the day too. So that's, those are the core things I did to get rid of psoriasis. It's nothing crazy. I didn't have to, you know, take some crazy supplement out of, out of nowhere. Um, but it did take time. And that's what I want you guys to get is I started that in 2000, Eight. And then now in 2000, I think it was 19 maybe, I finally started to see that disappear. Um, and maybe if I did the food allergies years ago, that wouldn't have taken this long. But for me, that, that was the kind of next step that, that really helped my psoriasis. So I'm telling you this to encourage you that the, the things you're doing, the things you're listening to on these videos and other people's you know, health videos, 
are things that you need to do to, for your health, not just for psoriasis. So when you do these good, great things for your health and your psoriasis doesn't go away, it doesn't mean it wasn't good. It means it wasn't enough to figure out your psoriasis. So keep looking, keep searching, and hopefully by watching this channel, by you know subscribing and seeing these videos, you're gonna continue to become your own health expert, and then psoriasis is gonna be a thing of the past. It's not gonna be your focus anymore. Your focus is gonna be performance, just performing at a high level, having high energy, and just really loving life, and loving the food that you're eating. I know I get comments like, what am I gonna eat if I, if I can't have car, all these grains? Well, we got vegetables and we got meat, and that's the stuff that I really think should be the core part of our diet. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hey, share your comments below on what you did to get rid of psoriasis. I love hearing all the different things. And really, the comments help us see that it's not the same for everybody. So many people have done different things that works. And uh, it's really just about becoming your own health, becoming an investigator and becoming your own health expert in that time. So subscribe to this channel, share this with others so they can learn how to become their own health expert as well. And uh, we thank you for watching. We'll talk to you next time.